In our last episode, we put our 30-year-old life raft to the test, then show you how they function and what's inside. And it's our home until we get rescued, and it's really sturdy. Okay, well, welcome to Bait Reef. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, I wish you were here. It's uh, quite amazing out here. <laughs> Just magical out here. So today we are going to cover off on some of the questions that you guys have been asking us. And uh, that involves questions on uh, the storm anchor and our ground tackle, some questions on our life raft, and a few other bits and bobs. So let's get going. Oh, yeah. Radio, Bob Fomenko. Bob asks, nice. Well, Bob says, nice. <laughs> So, what windlass are you using? And then he asks, 10 mil chain is about what in working load limit? And what about your fisherman's anchor? Did you keep it? You're very, very, uh, what's the word? Observant. Observant, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the fisherman's anchor is no longer on board. Uh, we are debating, actually. Not sure whether we're going to keep it or not. Not sure whether it's going to have any use or not. It's one, uh, of, the, it's one of them things we've been cutting it around for 15 years and never used it. So uh, yeah, it's we may get it regalvanised. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we may, may not. We, we may put it back on. <laughs> we're not sure about that one yet. We, we haven't quite decided. Radio, the windlass is a muir, isn't it? It is. It's a muir. It's a muir. The windlass is a muir. And a 10 mil uh, chain for the PWB L grade short link uh, has a working load limit of 1270 kgs and a braking strain of 8181 kgs. So there you go, Bob. Thanks for asking. Radio. Uh, Daniel Voon says thanks for another informative video. Uh, I'm sure you've checked out all other anchor options. Just curious uh, to know how the Rockner compared to the Mantis. Good question, Daniel. So, what's your answer? What did you think of the Rockner? Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Rockners. I, I think they're probably a pretty good design. But the, the biggest problem for us is, even though the Rockner and the Mantis are equivalent size, we we couldn't store an anchor like that without breaking it down, so that's why the Mantis won, a, won us over handstand, really. Yeah, yeah. The Mantis is, um, is is pulled apart and stored flat, whereas the Rockner is this giant thing yeah. um, that, that we couldn't put anywhere, so... Yeah, so. That, that's, uh, that's probably the main reason the, that the um, Mantis won us over, yeah. But I, I, I think that uh, personally, looking at all the tests, I, I tend to still lean still go with the mantis. I'd still go with the mantis. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, check out the tests for the mantis. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Radio. Uh, excuse me if I've got your name wrong, but Parter uh, asks if we use a chum weight on our anchor, and uh, no, we don't. We, um, yeah, we just keep things simple, and we haven't had the need to use one. I think chum weights are generally used if you use and uh, road, but we we run all chain, so it's yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a no-brainer for us. Alrighty, on to the life raft questions. So Bob Fomenko, I love you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what did you replace the life raft with, and how did you dispose of it after you inflated it? So uh, we re replaced it with a CSM brand Foreman raft. Radio Bob Yandel asks, how do you keep hold of the life raft after inflation? Good question. And I know you pulled the inflation cord. Was the cord attached to the raft after inflation? 
Yes. Yes, it was. Um, actually, I'll ask you first question because you've got four questions here in, in one. So, uh, how do you how do you keep hold of the life raft after inflation? So, the life raft is actually attached to the vessel um, by a tether line, and when you hop in the life raft, you use that knife and you cut yourself free from the vessel. So that's how that's supposed to work. Um, obviously, if the vessel sinks super quick, you want to get that tether line cut pretty quick. So, uh, um, did you buy an Avon as a replacement? No, we didn't. Um, I'm not even sure if they're operating actually. Um, what a great brand. But we bought a CSM, which uh, are also a really good brand, and a lot of the commercial vessels use CSM, so uh, we thought that was a pretty good thing. So, have a look at those, and uh, and uh, Bob says, the Avon did seem well made, but everything was better made 30 years ago. Yes, that is true. Oh, I agree with you there, Bob. <laughs> yeah, we hope our new life raft is just as well made as the Avon. I'm not sure whether it's going to last 30 years, but anyway, I'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Radio. So, Tony Stott says, very informative. The high quality of your old life raft begs the question, wouldn't it be viable to sell your old raft to another cruiser who could then get it serviced service by Avon? Um, and obviously, as you both state, a dinghy is no substitute for a life raft. So correct on the last one. Um, yeah, I, you know, I guess we could have sold it to another cruiser, but, um, you know, Darren and I are pretty, we sort of wear things out before we, before we give them away or recycle them or, or whatnot, and uh, yeah, it's a life raft, so for us, we felt that we wouldn't want to give it away to somebody. It's a sort of, it's 30 years old. Yeah. And um, you just don't know how, we spoke to um, the, the people at Sunday Ocean Services and you just don't know how long that glue's gonna last. Yeah. Um, some of those, you could see mold on some of those tether lines. Um, so they're obviously weakened. Yeah, we, we just wouldn't have felt right to um, give a life-saving device away to somebody when you didn't know how long, how well it was holding up there on the grass in a storm it may not have held up long enough so yeah who knows it's uh yeah just get rid of it i guess yeah happy to give an old dinghy away yeah but not not so much a life raft as yeah. such yeah. yeah better to go to um somewhere if, uh, yeah a learning institute maybe or something yeah. like that <laughs> radio radio yeah. Um, ben Steele asks, how often do you have your life raft invalidated? And thanks for the audio, the, the awesome video and big thumbs up guys. Thanks Ben, big yeah, thumbs up to you. Ben. Rocking it. Uh, the life raft, they vary actually. Um, Depends on the manufacturer a bit, but I, I think the one we've got is uh, three years I think. It's five years for the first service, then three years every after that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what that is. And Chris Allingson asks, the life raft looks perfectly good. Can't you service and refill the inflation uh, mechanism and have it repacked? You probably could, but you know, that's up to you. Yeah, um, with and over buying a new one. So the cost of actually servicing a life raft can actually be pretty high. So you can be looking between $1,000 and $1,500. Some people I've heard um, $1,800 to have their life raft serviced just with the replacement of all the old items. And we purchased that life raft for $2,000. Uh, they sort of sit around 2000 between two and three, eight. Depends what size you're going for. Um, yeah, so for us, we just went for a new one. No question, yeah. Radio. Uh, Daniel Voon asks some good questions about the grab bag. So he says, thanks again for another informative video. Uh, brief question on your PFD. Do you envisage a problem concerning the sensitivity of the vice of the device accidentally activating by ocean spray when you're sailing in rough weather? Uh, he'd heard some sailors during blue water sailing that the automated PFD can be a problem. And he also says, this was a long time ago, I'm sure that technology has improved and be interested to hear a view on this. Taking this opportunity to wish you and Darren a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Stay safe from New Zealand. 
cheers Daniel I hope you got our lovely New Year's wishes as well uh, the answer is that technology has improved and uh, I've used I've been working in the rain and sailing in the rain and have been wearing automatic PFDs and haven't had one um, go off on me so yeah yeah I think that sums it up that's about it radio chain plates questions uh, Bob Fomenko g'day Bob <laughs> okay 19 days and 1900 dollars yeah uh, pretty good uh, so questions was that for new plate new chain plates or did you reuse some uh, that was for new chain plates we had a fabricator make us up uh, this chain plates out of stainless steel uh, okay what about the bow nose um, or the nose cone uh, was that reused and new bow rollers welded on or did you fabricate a new one so he reused the nose cone because it was still in really good condition yeah and he just he just made up new rollers and stuff so that's yeah basically it's still all the same yeah so um uh, you didn't replace your standing rigging, so what age is that? Well, Bob, we replaced our standing rigging actually two years two ago. Years ago. Yeah. So, and uh, that's another job that we did do ourselves, so yeah. highly recommend it. So that's uh, the standing rigging is now two years old. Yeah. And uh, Bob also says, as far as changing the chain plates, I feel you did the right thing, keeping it as it was built encapsulated lasted a while it's now that you're having the big deal to remove it in your case um, and you didn't have to destroy any wood to get to it so uh, he also asks maybe oh he, sorry uh, Bob also says instead of silicon sealant maybe you could use butyl tape for the deck area and um, yeah I'm really curious about butyl tape as well uh, apparently the brand that you can get in America is a better brand than what you can get in Australia. Uh, I haven't heard very good reviews of the butyl tape from people who've used it, who bought it here, and I'm not sure uh, why we can't get that brand here. But yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Radio uh, Kev Bjork says hi. Can you tell me what type of resin you used for your repairs, and what type of thickener you used? West systems. West Systems. Yeah. Darren is a big fan of West Systems. I've been using it for a long time. I can't really fault that anything that I've done in the past is, it just seems to stand the test, test of time. So, yeah, it's just, you can get cheaper stuff, polyurethanes and all sorts of stuff, but yeah, I've just, I've just run with West Systems. I find it pretty good. Right, yo, rocking it. Uh, so, Sean Toomey asks, were you attempted to leave the chain plates exposed so you, that you could visually inspect them in the future? Uh, we could have left part of the chain plates exposed, but we couldn't really in the end, could we? No, not really. It, when you glass it in, it's sort of a part of the structure almost, so you really have to to um, glass it all back in as, as much as it'd be nice to be able to inspect it. But in saying that, the last lot was 30 years old, so uh, yeah, know, it, it stood the test of time really, and and they weren't really that bad considering you know yeah. all the work that we've done. Yeah. So. Okay, so Graham Henderson says great video and some hard work involved. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> what preventative maintenance could have avoided this, and will you be doing in the future? So we have drilled uh, holes into the base of the chain plate enclosure. Yeah. So that water will leak out and we will notice. And we've also we changed the silicon that we were using to a neutral cure silicon. Yeah. Apparently it has no reaction to uh, a chemical cure. I think it's uh, the word they use for uh, the other the other brand of silicon. So yeah, we've we've moved to a 
Well, we didn't actually know at the time, so we... Yeah, we've just figured out that previously that, that neutral cure silicon is the way to go, that yeah. chemical cure actually reacts with the stainless, so yeah. a lot of you may, may know that already, but we didn't yeah. know that, we've just figured it out, so... Yeah. yeah. It was a part of the learning curve. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so John Herring says, did you leave drain holes in the chain place in casements? Yes, John, we, yeah, did. we did. So good on you for, for guessing that one. Radio, uh, general questions. Um, have you, Roger K. Davis, hello Roger, uh, thanks for asking. Uh, we Have you encountered any dangerous sailing conditions that you felt that you were in over your head or your capability? And I haven't. No. Nope, we're all pretty good. But we are, um, we sort of tend to sail within our capabilities and we definitely check the weather and whatnot. There's some cruises. Hello! <laughs> Hi again! <laughs> Isn't that cool? Some cruises just come into the anchorage. Radio. Um, Thomas D. Harrell asks, uh, this is off subject but important to me, he says, do you sail at night and what is your opinion of sailing at night? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I, I, I really like it. Yeah, I really enjoy sailing yeah. at night too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, it's a really can be a really peaceful time, and you really feel very connected to um, to what you're doing. Yeah, it certainly can be an interesting time as well. Yeah, uh, and it can be challenging. Yeah. It's good fun. So, uh, John Christopher says. You both have great charisma. Thank you, John. You Thanks, have great John. charisma. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, I just happened to come across your channel and got hooked. How long have you been sailing? Mm. <laughs> I don't know how many years it was. So I started uh, sailing with my mum's, with one of my mum's boyfriend when I was a teenager, and have been sailing since then. Club racing. Uh, Cruising, voyaging, all sorts. Yeah, I think uh, I've been sailing for like 25 years now, so it's been a while. Yeah. Not sure exactly, but it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we wrote up a little bit about that on our website, actually. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to check that out, um, go there and <laughs> uh, sailingsbsarian.com and uh, have a little read on our blog. Okay, so Michael P. Oh, Michael, uh, it's a great question, well, a nice question. Uh, every video I see, the necklace that Darren wears, would you mind commenting on where it's from, please? Sorry, this is not related to this episode. That's okay, Michael, you can ask any question you like. And, um, oh, <laughs> that, it's a really cool, actually. Uh, I bought the pearl on, this is a black pearl, and I bought it many years ago in Rarotonga when I was a young lass and uh, I bought an identical one that I actually am not wearing at the moment but I thought I would give that to my lovely love when I found my lovely love, met my lovely love, my lovely sailing fella and it has been about 30 years, <laughs> maybe 25, <laughs> that I've had the black pearls <laughs> <laughs> and then we met and Tokoroa Jim carved uh, designs on the pearls that are really significant to us uh, about sailing in the ocean and protection and and uh, he's a really clever fellow so if you're ever there uh, hunt him out and have him carve a pearl for you yeah okay. so we have uh, I gifted those to Darren and myself for our wedding gift so it's kind of special and uh, yeah, if you look up uh, Tokoro Jim on Facebook, you will find some of his designs there. So that's the story behind the lovely pearl necklace. And uh, we hope you can track one down for yourself sometime, Michael, because they really are beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for asking, Michael. <laughs> okay, so that's about it. Um, we will sign off for now. Our next video will show you some of the gorgeous um, areas and reefs of the places that we currently are. Yeah, hopefully it won't be uh, another maintenance video, we'll be just cruising around <laughs> just for something different. <laughs> yeah, we're, 
<laughs> we're a little over the maintenance videos. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. We find them really interesting and thought provoking and we hope that uh, that uh, you get a bit more informed through our answers and through our entire channel altogether. Oh yeah, fantastic. So we shall check out. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe up in this corner. Uh, click on the notification bell so that you can uh, have YouTube give you a bit of a ping when our next video comes out. And uh, please give us the big thumbs up. That would be a great thing for us. It really helps us out. And please keep those comments coming. We love to hear from you. So. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.